Hi, has there ever been a time in your life that you have felt weary about the work of the Lord? Has there ever been a time when you've just said, I'm just going to stop this, I'm not going to do anything else, uh, I, am, I am tired, I am weary? You know, in Luke chapter 10, there was a man that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves. You know, if we ever sit down and just do nothing uh, for the Lord, then that is a time that the enemy can come in and rob us and strip us from our righteousness, which is in Christ Jesus, uh, our joy, our peace, our comfort uh, can leave us uh, and be taken from us if we go away from the body of Christ. You know, this message today is for those in particular that have sat down on the Lord and have said, I am tired, I'm not going to do any more, let everybody else do uh, something now. Uh, just I've just been uh, too busy doing things. My name is Sherry White, and I'm coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International uh, in Athens, Georgia. And I thank you for viewing today. And I believe that, that the Lord wants to pour on all of us fresh oil. You know, let's turn to... Uh, keep your finger in Luke chapter 10 because we're going to come back there because that's where our passage is today. But turn with me to Psalms 92, verse 10. You know, there were many times in the life of David, King David, that he was weary, that he was tired, that he felt like he was going to, to faint. But in Psalms 92, verse 10, it says, But my horn... Shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil. And that's what we're going to believe the Lord for as we talk about his goodness today and how he takes care of us. We're going to believe for that fresh oil to be poured upon us that we might go and do the things of God that we're supposed to be doing. You know, in verse 1 of 92, it says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name, O Most High. You know, if there's a time of, of weariness in our, in our Christian walk, in our spiritual work for the Lord, then we need to give him thanks. We need to rise up and begin to give him thanks. And I'm going to come back to uh, Thanksgiving as we... Um, continue on with this this message you know I believe that that the Lord is the good Samaritan in this passage go back with me to Luke chapter 10 and let's just read a little bit here but but first I want to tell you a vision that I had this afternoon I saw people as they were journeying down this road and all of a sudden they just fell out. They just fell on the ground. A lot of them had big backpacks on their back, and, and they were just falling out uh, because they were so tired. They were uh, weary of their journey. Uh, they were walking down this road, and they just began to, to fall. And there were others in the body of Christ that came along and picked them up and put their arms around them and around their waist, and they walked on from there. Let's read. A certain man, I'm in verse 30 of Luke chapter 10, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves. Now, in the, in the New Testament especially, Jerusalem is a symbol and a type of the church of the living God. He was going down from the church to Jerusalem, I mean to Jericho, and he fell among the thieves which stripped him of his raiment, and our raiment is the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus, and wounded him. How many of you have been wounded by the body of Christ? There have been many that have been wounded and, and, 
and stomped upon by other members of the body of Christ. Now this should not be, however, there are times when this occurs. Wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now here was the thieves. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Now, the, the priest and the Levi were, is a symbol and type of the religious mindset. Oh no, we're not going to touch that. No, these people cannot come into our services because they do not look like us, they do not smell like us, uh, they are not clothed like us, and so therefore we're going to ask them to, uh, to leave our service. You know, when we had the, our mission, the mission open in downtown Athens, we had that for eight years, and we ministered to the street people, the alcoholics, the drug addicts, the, the prostitutes, the pimps. Uh, we ministered to those individuals, and there was a young man that came to me uh, one day during one of our services, and he said, you know, he said, I'm glad to be here, and I said, well, we're glad to have you, and then he, he said to me, you know, he pointed to a, a, a church building down the street, and he said, you know, I went into that place right there, and I sat on the back row, and I didn't say anything. I just wanted to see what their, their service was like. And he said, all of a sudden, I felt this hand upon my arm, and I looked up, and it was one of the, one of the ushers, and they took this young man, and the usher said, uh, I'm sorry, we don't have your kind in our services and took him outside on the front steps. You know, this is, this is not correct behavior for the body of Christ. And, you know, that, that is not for me to, to judge, but I do know that God loves that young man that went into that congregation. And we, we loved what we did. And God taught us many things. Uh, through that experience with the mission. And one of the things that he taught us was to love others as Christ has, has loved us with unconditional love. You know, this is, this is something that, you know, the priest and the Levi had that, that mindset, that religious mindset, and God is bringing that mindset down. And he's causing the body of Christ to rise up and to take its rightful place uh, by him. Can you say amen? And likewise, the Levi, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed on by the other side. But in 33, but a certain Samaritan, a certain Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the Son of God, as he journeyed, he came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He was moved with compassion for him, and he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, pouring in, what, the oil and the wine. Now, this is what I saw on the road as I in my vision. I saw these individuals that were falling out, and then I saw others coming behind them, picking them up, and even taking their, their backpacks from them and carrying their backpacks. You know, it says that we're to bear one another's burdens. They were weary. These people in my vision were weary. They needed a fresh touch from the Lord. How many of you sitting out there viewing this video today, you need a fresh touch from the Lord? You know, I believe the Lord is touching you even as I speak right now in the name of Jesus with a freshness, with a just a refreshing from the Holy Spirit come down upon you in the name of Jesus. You know, it says in 2 Thessalonians 3.13, we'll not turn there, but it says, be not weary in well-doing. You know, you have a purpose and you have a destiny. And what the enemy would like to see is you stop in your tracks, sit down on the Lord, and not move into that purpose and into that destiny. You know, I said I was going to come back to the thanksgiving. You know, if we begin to thank the Lord, if we begin to give Him 
of thanks for all things, all things, then what does he do? He picks us up and he puts us in that place of strength. How many of you need strength today? Some of you need strength spiritually, but some of you need strength even in your physical walk with the Lord. You know, it says here that in 2 Corinthians 4, 1, that we're going to receive mercy if we faint not. The Lord does not want his body on the ground. The Lord does not want his body wounded. He wants to bind up our wounds with the oil and with the wine. The oil standing for the, the anointing, which is on the word of God. And then the, the wine uh, symbolizing a type of joy, a type of refreshing, a time of fruitfulness. You know, he wants his body to be fruitful. In John chapter 15, he says, we're ordained uh, to bring forth much fruit. If you've ever wondered what your purpose is or what your destiny is as a member of the body of Christ, this is where it starts. It starts by producing fruit for the Lord. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, be careful for nothing. I want to look at that one. Go over if you will, to uh, Philippians uh, 4, 6, and 7. Let's put our eyes upon that scripture, if you will, please. It says here, I'm going to start with verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. In verse 7, and then something happens. When we do this, then something else happens. It says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. If you're weary today, receive the refreshing, the fresh oil coming to you, being poured out on you, even at this very moment in Jesus' name. Now I know that he put this message in my heart to bring today. He wants his body strong. He says, let the weak say I am strong. I say I'm strong. Are you strong? Say, I am strong. Fresh oil. We are to cease from our own works. In Hebrews 4.10, we are to cease from our own works. You know, they can make us weary. When we're trying to do something on our own strength, in, in our own abilities, and some of you are at that place right now. You have tried to do something that you weren't even called to do. And weakness will come at that point. And a weariness will come at that point. But when we are doing exactly what God wants us to do, he gives us that strength to go on day in and day out. Some of you are pastoring and you need to be in the field. Some of you are in the field and you need to be pastoring. You're out of position. And when you're out of position, it hurts. And you get tired and you get weary and you drop on the ground. You know, let's go back to Luke chapter 10. He's poured in the oil and he's poured in the wound, uh, the wine. And it said he set him upon his own beast. He has set the body at the right hand of Jesus. The Father has set the body on the right hand of Jesus. Having the authority and the power that the Holy Spirit gives to us.
and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, glory. When Jesus comes in our life and when he rises up in us, hallelujah, we have the strength that we need to go on. I know that I'm speaking to some people today. I know that the Lord is touching you right now. And he is speaking to you in your ear. And he's telling you, get up and begin to move again. And I will show you the direction that you are to go. Take care of him. And if you spend more, when I come again, I will repay. I will repay you. And then in verse 36, Jesus said, who do you think? Is the good neighbor in this story of him that fell among the thieves. And he said he showed mercy, he that showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said, go and do likewise. Now in my vision, those individuals, those members of the body of Christ, that were coming down that road behind these that were falling out and they picked them up and they some of them carried uh, their their backpacks and their and their heavy burdens and they put their arms around them and they went on down the road. You know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Instead of gossiping and backbiting and stabbing in the back and wounding our brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be picking them up and carrying them on down the road and helping them to fulfill their purpose and their destiny. Be ye thankful unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. You know, I think it's very interesting that in Psalms 92, 10, David said, you are anointing me with fresh oil. But in verse 1, he is giving thanks unto the Lord. And he's singing unto the Lord. And he's ministering unto the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord shall rise up and mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That's where it is, people. It's not about you, it's about Jesus. It's about what he can do. It's about showing the glory of God to the world out there. That's what it's all about. It's not about us. It's about him. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, I praise you for this message. I thank you, Lord, that we're not going to be weary. That we are, we're just going to receive right now that fresh anointing, that fresh oil uh, from you, O oh Lord. That you are pouring into our wounds oil and wine. And you are taking care of us. And you are having compassion on us. And Lord, we receive your mercy today uh, in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, uh, but this is something that, that I'm just receiving right now. I'm receiving his mercy. I'm receiving his compassion. Oh, in my life, praise the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for viewing today. I pray for those that have sickness in their bodies, that it will dry up and it will leave your body in the name of Jesus. Those that have been having migraine headaches, I tell that those symptoms to leave your body, I tell those uh, the roots of that problem uh, to dry up and to be gone in Jesus' name. Those of you that have been having difficulty with depression and oppression and even suicidal thoughts, uh, of, uh, because you felt like you have failed the Lord and you failed your family. I come against that spirit uh, in uh, suicide in the name of Jesus and I tell it to leave you and never come back and to walk in the dry places in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Those that have been wounded by, by other brothers and sisters of Christ 
I ask God to bind up your wounds and to have compassion and mercy uh, upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for viewing. God bless you. And Jesus Christ is the fountain of life.